Hi everyone, I'm Brent and today we're going to take a closer look at animation in iOS applications. Specifically, we're going to see how easy it is to use the Core Animation API to create some cool looking animations. Now, before we start, this video is really meant to be less of an instructional video and more of a quick look at how easy it is to create these animations. We're really just going to take a, a peek under the hood to see how animations work in iOS applications. With that said, let's take a look at a simple single view app. I call it Dog Park. Dog Park basically allows you to move a dog bone around the screen by using a touch gesture, which I'm mimicking with my mouse pointer. And when the screen is touched, our little dog here will chase the bone around. It's just a fun little animation that I'm going to show you how to create here in a few minutes. First though, let's take a high level look at how to approach designing an app like this. There's really two components to creating an app like this. Creating the layers and then animating those layers. First, let's view the app in terms of its layers. We start with the main screen of your iPhone or iPad. On top of the main screen, we're going to create a view object and lay that on top of the main screen. This will serve as our background, which, in this case, will become the grass you saw in the application. Then, finally, we're going to create two more layers that will house the dog image and the bone image. For those more familiar with Cocoa APIs, the background view is just a UI view object, and the last two layers will be core animation layers. Next, we'll load the image of the grass onto the view layer, and then the images of the dog and the bone onto the core animation layers. Then, we'll put it all together. From a programming perspective, we'll do this with three objects. One, the app delegate, where we'll designate the main window for the app and also designate the view controller. Two, the view controller object, which will basically just load the view. And three, the view object itself, which is where we'll create the core animation layers which will house the dog and the bone images. Since this is just a single view app, the app delegate and the view controller really won't do much. These objects become more important when you're working with multiple views. In our app, the app delegate will basically just register the app as loaded and the view controller will simply just load the view. In this app, the view object will do most of the heavy lifting. This is where we'll put the code to move the bone when the screen is touched, and where we'll put the code that allows the dog to follow the bone's movement. Now, enough talk. Let's do some coding. We're going to do the actual coding in Xcode, which is Apple's development environment. All you have to do to get Xcode is to go to Apple's developer website, register as a developer, which is free, and then download the Xcode software. In the software package, you will also get the interface builder and the iOS simulator, which will allow you to test your applications on your Mac. Now, in the interest of time, I've already done the coding for the core animation layers and uploaded the images into Xcode. As I described earlier, here are the three objects we'll need to use. First, the app delegate, then the view controller, and then finally the view itself. I've also uploaded the images that we're going to use. The background, the bone, and the dog image. And I've also uploaded the Quartz framework, which is what we'll need in order to use core animation. Now, I'm just going to cycle through each of the files so that you can see what code goes into creating the layers. So now let's run the application in the simulator and see what we've got. As you can see, we have the background and the image of the dog, but we can't actually do any animation yet since we haven't included that code. And that is what we're going to do next. Apple actually makes it very easy to record screen touches. They do it with one single method that records when someone begins to touch the screen. 
all we have to do is implement this method and put our animation code in it. We'll start by getting the touch and then we'll record its position in the screen. Next, we'll create the animation itself. The animation is going to have three properties that we need to create with it. First is the from position. Next is the to position. And three, we need to create the duration of the movement. Next, we'll have to tell the dog layer where we want it to go. Then, we'll tell the dog layer to animate itself from the from position to the to position. We'll do this by adding the animation to the dog layer. Now that we've created the code for animating the dog, we can build the application. As you can see, the dog follows the touches on the screen. But, we haven't added the code for the bone image. We'll go ahead and do that next. Once again, we'll run the application, but this time, when we touch the screen, the dog bone will appear. Now, you may have noticed that the bone seems to be animated, even though we didn't actually add any code to do this. The reason behind this is that the animation is implicit. This means that core animation will actually add a basic animation whenever we move a layer like we did with the bone. If we didn't want this animation, we could actually go in and disable it. Now, before I go, let's add one more feature to this application. Our little dog here is nice and all, but sometimes you just feel like changing things up. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just shake our phone and get an entirely new dog? Well, all we have to do is add a little more code, and we can. First, we have to set up the first responder. The first responder in an application will handle any event that isn't assigned to an object. So, when an event like a shake happens, whatever is assigned to be the first responder will handle it. Let's start by implementing a method that tells the view object that it can become the first responder. Then we'll implement a method that tells it to actually become the first responder. Once we've set up the first responder, we can implement the method to recognize the shake motion. Again, Apple supplies a method to do this. We'll set up a static integer variable so that the method will always remember the cumulative value of the variable. This will allow us to use an if statement to toggle between two dog images.
Now we'll run the application one last time. And what I'm going to do is use the simulator to simulate a shake gesture. And when that happens, we'll have an entirely new dog. Well guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you learned a little bit about core animation. Thanks for watching.